Hello and welcome back to Suspended Fanimation. I am your host, Dennis Patholkis, and this is Saturday Morning Blast Off. Welcome, everybody. Yeah, this is uh, kind of an interesting Saturday Morning Blast Off because this is the whole uh, TV show bloodbath cancellation. Uh, Jesus, it just doesn't end. It's uh, There's been a lot of shows that have been canceled. A lot of shows that have been canceled. Uh just this week alone and also this year i mean this year we, we've had a lot of cancellations going on and uh you know i'll, I'll get to that in a little bit let's uh, let some people trickle in because i know i'm starting a little bit earlier as i was talking to the chat a, a little bit before we got started here uh there's a dog fair that's nearby and i want to take the little furry boss over here pepper to uh with me and see what she thinks about the dog fair. There's all kinds of crap that's over there. So she likes going to those things every now and then. And I don't mind it either. So let's start off with something a little bit light here. Uh, Sigourney Weaver has confirmed that she's going to be in the new Ghostbusters sequel. The one that has uh, Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, and uh, I don't. I think Eddie uh, Ernie Hudson is going to be in it too. I'm not sure. Of course, Harold Ramis isn't going to be in it because he's dead. So, um, yeah. How do I feel about this? Uh, let it go, man. She was supposed to be a one and done character. Uh, Ghostbusters 2 kind of revolving around her and her kid ruined a lot of things, I think. I, I, I didn't like Ghostbusters 2 as much as the first one. The first one was good. And it's hard to catch lightning in a bottle, quite honestly. Yeah. Uh, the Shining comes to mind when you say bloodbath, Morix. Yeah, uh, I was trying to capture that kind of. I almost did the Shining hallway with the you know doors opening up and blood coming out, but I I figured I would just go with the overall bloodbath on the um, picture that I took there. That that I not that I took, not that you can tell that I took it or anything like that. But yeah, is it really going to be Ghostbusters without Harold Ramis? Uh, not for me. Yeah, it's. He was the one that pretty much made it what it was. And uh, Harold Ramis was a great writer. I mean, he was a fantastic comedy writer. You go back and take a look at Caddyshack. That is all him. I mean, uh, granted, there's acting in it and stuff like that. He knew who to pull in, but it's his script. Yes, Dan Aykroyd came up with the idea for Ghostbusters, but Harold Ramis polished it. And um, yeah, they could bring Harold back as a ghost, but that would be cheap. I think. And then you'd have to hire an actor to do it and all that stuff. Uh, Cause you know, CGI is not cheap. Uh, just ask Swamp Thing. <laughs> Too soon on that one. Or... Yeah. Um, I, I don't know where, you know, it's the same thing like her coming back for Avatar. So her character died in Avatar. Yeah. I know spoilers. Cause it was what, 20 years ago that fucking movie came out. Um, but she's coming back as a different character, not the same character, but a different character. Don't ask me how it just is. So Viking bitch says, I wish they would stop going back to the past and start looking forward. Ghostbusters is great. Leave it alone. Exactly. Uh, most expensive one and done ever. Uh, which one are you talking about? Morks? I mean, Ed Brewer, which one? Uh, Oh, Swamp Thing. Um, no, there's there's some stuff that's involved. I'll get, I'll get into it when I start talking about it. It's uh, there's a lot more to it than what happened. And uh, well, shit. Let's just get into it. Why not? Because we're here. Uh, so yeah, Swamp Thing was canceled by DC Universe after one season and airing of one episode. They're going to air the rest of the season because, of course, they've got nothing else to show, so they're going to do it. So why did all this happen? Well, it cost $85 million to make this thing. They filmed it in North Carolina, and they were trying to blame North Carolina, saying that North Carolina fudged their uh, their calculations on their taxes, uh, on, the, on the tax rebate that they're going to get. They were expecting to get $45 million back from North Carolina. North Carolina Tax Commission was like, no, 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 no. Our operating budget for the year is $31 million. They said for the pilot, 
uh, we got we gave you guys a grant of four point six million dollars for the pilot alone. We told you in a contract we can only give you up to twelve million dollars legally. That's it. After that, that's for the whole series. If you decide to shoot the series here in North Carolina, so somebody I believe, and I'm I'm gonna guess it's the showrunners on this told the executives that they could get half the cost of the production uh, gotten back from tax breaks. And that was all bullshit. Someone did not read the contract on that. And the North Carolina Tax Commission has been tweeting this shit out uh, lately in the last couple of days. They've been going, no, 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 no. We're not getting thrown under the bus here. It's the, you know, it's the whole production company that did this. Yeah, a misunderstanding of $43 million exactly. Yeah, it's uh, they thought they were going to get half their budget paid for on this. And I know James Wan was probably shooting for the stars on this because he was like, hey, I brought you Aquaman. I did Annabelle. I've done all, you know, Annabelle 2, all these movies that I have brought Warner Brothers in money. I can do this much for a TV show. And uh, the executives got up from their butt chugging for once. And they're like, oh, wait, hang on a second. Let me get that last little bit of. Okay, we got a last little bit of coke up my ass. All right. Nope. Sorry, you're going to get canceled. Yeah. And uh, that was the main thing. I'm pretty sure is what it was. Also, you have going on. Um, AT&T has taken over Time Warner. The merger has finally happened. Uh, it got held up in the courts for a while in the DOJ, uh, Department of Justice there. So they finally, you know, uh, got their act together and at and ceo i can't remember his name uh he was recently when i was talking about direct tv now raising their prices he was the one who said oh uh all those lower tier people or all those peons essentially was what he was saying that dropped us because we raised our rates to 50 dollars a month for not offering any more content we don't need them the people that we want are the people that are stupid enough to pay more money for no more programming so that's what he wants to do again by bundling up uh, HBO Go, Cinemax, and um, Time Warner. Because right now HBO Go costs $15 on its own. So he wants to bundle those three together for uh, $16 or $17 a month is what he wants. I believe it's Randall Stevenson. Yes, you're right, Mark. It is Randall Stevenson. And his whole logic is, is that people will pay more for less is what it is. Uh, he's trying to go by the Netflix thing where people have subscribed to something, forgotten that they subscribe to it, and will continue to pay monthly while not watching it. That's what he's going with. Uh, the thing is, is yes, Warner Brothers has a vast TV and movie library, but HBO Go, I have HBO right now as part of my package on cable and Cinemax as well because I got a really good deal that was Actually, the same price as what DirecTV now was offering, but I got all the you know movie channels, and I hardly watch that shit at all because it's the same stuff over and over and over again. They don't have anything of substance. Look at Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones was shitty this season. This last season was shit. Um, Westworld, who knows what that's going to be like because it's not coming out until 2020, you know? Um, and they just, they aren't, they aren't offering the stuff. Warrior, okay, Warrior is a good show, but it's one show. One show. That's it. Uh, you know, out there that they have. What else? And that's done. I actually had the season finale last night. So what they're trying to do is, is they are saying that, you know, uh, I, I'm guessing this is what they're doing, is they're trying to kneecap DC Universe because it's a fledgling streaming service that's only cost eight bucks a month at the moment so that they can fold it into this Time Warner thing. And um, they're probably going to try and go for 20 bucks a month is what I'm guessing. I know they say 16 to 17 dollars a month. My guess is it's going to be uh, like 1899 or 1999 a month, something like that. So <clears throat> that's the other factor as well. So you're, you're trying to uh, hobble an already streaming service by cutting the season after the first episode's aired. A well-received first episode, by the way, too. Uh, th 
I'm liking Swamp Thing. I really do like where they're going with Swamp Thing. They've done a really good job with it. The writing's good. Uh, you know, you could tell they pumped a lot of money into this. The special effects are good. Uh, the sets are well made. All that stuff. And it's just a shame that, um, well, they, well, first of all, they pumped way too much money into it, is what it was, for a TV show. For a movie, yes, I could see that. Uh, and, and that's all. I'm, I'm going to put this blame on James Wan, pretty much, because... He's the one who is a higher up in Warner Brothers in the executive department there. And I'm pretty sure he kind of overstepped what he was supposed to be doing and spent way too much money thinking it was a movie instead of a TV show. So you're not getting the return back on TV shows that you do on movies, um, especially on a streaming service, because you, you don't have commercials on a streaming service. You just have subscribers. And sure, they probably got a little bump up in subscribers for Swamp Thing when they announced it. But people, you know how people are. They're going to wait until that whole series is played out, and then they're going to do either the free trial or they're going to do, um, <clears throat> excuse me, or, or they're going to do it for one month, you know, pay dollars for one month and binge everything. That's the way people do it. No Doom Patrol news. No, no, no Doom Patrol news, um, works. Hopefully it's not in the bloodbath, but... Uh, uh, well, Ed Brewer, that was the whole thing is because they didn't get that tax break that they thought they were going to get. Uh, they had to cut it back from 13 episodes to 10 episodes because the executive branch finally woke up and said, well, what the fuck are you doing with our money? Yeah. So, and yes, exactly. Uh, Slurmy, you're right. It is hard to be invested in a show knowing that it's canceled especially when they're setting up so many things and um ah uh, okay move for you're driving I'll, I'll make sure i to say things loud there you go <laughs> but yeah it's uh, there was a whole host of factors that led to swamp thing being canceled and uh it was all the production company's fault is what i'm guessing at this point because everything is pointing towards the production company Nothing is pointing towards the North Carolina tax board who they've spilled out exactly what they have in their contract. And uh, which is what one of the, what the basically the production company is trying to blame North Carolina for this not happening. They've already exonerated themselves. It's not the executive branch that's, that's doing this. Of course, it's going to be the production company at this point. That's where it's all running back to. They keep trying to point fingers, but it keeps pointing back to them. So they overstep their bounds. There we go. Hey, feisty. Oh, no, she, excuse me. She's not in here as of yet. Sorry. I thought I saw her in here. Yeah. Um, and that's what worries me the most. Cause I mean, they, they are now using this as a uh, pry bar in order to get rid of DC universe and fold it into this time Warner fiasco bullshit whatever it is. And quite frankly, if they do that, I'm, I'm out on that. I won't, I won't uh, roll over into that uh, camp because I already get HBO for free. I already get Cinemax for free. I'm not going to pay, you know, uh, you know, another streaming service fee essentially for, you know, another premium uh, streaming service fee just to get some Warner brothers content. Yeah. <clears throat> So for those of you just joining us, I'm into the bloodbath already. I started with Swamp Thing. I'm going to lead going to Happy and, of course, Deadly Class. So Happy and Deadly Class were also canceled by Sci-Fi this week, both on the same day. And uh, it, they did it late at night on a Tuesday night. Well, not late for me, but late for you guys on the East Coast. I think they did it after midnight on your, uh, your guys' time. And um, already there's some rumors going around. So um, Deadly Class, of course, only had one season. Sony TV production or yeah, Sony uh, television production is actually shopping it around. So they're, they're going around and they're shopping this around to other networks, which is good. They are actively shopping it around. Uh, they aren't just waiting on this one because they really liked it. Um, happy on the other hand, had two seasons and a, a, a granted a lackluster second season. 
Um, but it is the first season on Netflix is actually doing very, very well. It's been a surprise hit on Netflix. It's actually leading from what I understand, because Netflix does not release their numbers or their ratings, but supposedly it's at the top of the heap of everything that is uh, that they're that they're streaming on Netflix. And there is rumor that Netflix might be picking them up. So that is where that is going at this point is that happy might be going to Netflix. So I've been hearing rumblings here and there about it. And I see something go up and then it gets taken down. I see something go up and then it gets taken down. So we don't know where that's going to at the moment. Yeah. And also it makes sense because Netflix just, uh, well, they renewed Lucifer for a fifth and final season. So they're going to fund a final season of Lucifer and then get rid of it. So they brought it back from Fox. Uh, Fox canceled it. Netflix brings it back for a season four. They renew it for a season five and then cancel it. So. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure if they do that, they could bring in Happy um, for the same budget pretty much and make happy for a season three of happy. I'm pretty sure it did. I honestly, I never got into it. It was a police procedural with uh, the devil pretty much is what I, you know, I got out of it, which is a far cry from the comic. It, remember this is based on vertigo comics, Lucifer, and they completely ignored the comics, if you will, and went a different route. So I didn't bother with it. It just wasn't for me. I know a lot of people that like it and love it, and uh, it just wasn't it wasn't my cup of tea. Uh, Pen Farm Girl says I had several coworkers who claim they loved Lucifer. Not one watched it on Netflix. Yep, and that's exactly what happens. Is again, you don't have any advertising for Netflix shows. Um, you have it all dumped, an entire season dumped all at once onto Netflix. So people can binge it and it's gone at that point. It's out of sight, out of mind. And that's what happens. I'll be getting to that more in a little bit here. I'll, I'll be getting to that. Uh, yes, he is blonde in the comics, Ed Burr. It's, yeah, there's, there's all, well, that, that's not a big deal, but I mean, um, yeah, it's just a lot of things are, the, the old television models are not working anymore. And I've said this time and time again. And what they need to do is, is they need to actually, and they being the TV executives, the streaming executives, all this kind of stuff, need to realize you need to put your stuff out weekly, advertise it a bit, and also you need to shorten it to a three-season arc. That way you can say, okay, we have this story. If it does well, if it becomes popular, we start another three season arc and so on and so forth. That way you have a three year block. You have, you know, you actually can plan this kind of stuff out and say, okay, we've got three years of programming in this one spot for here. Hey, Mr. Roboto. Um, yeah, Slurmy Scott, I kind of figured I am mother was going to be horrible because they were trying to pump it up and it just, it looked like it was going to be bad. Um, instead of weekly, a new show every month, they, they wouldn't be able to do that. Quite honestly, it's, it's a numbers game and doing it weekly is a lot better, quite honestly, because you have it fresh. If you're doing it once a month, people are going to forget. People are really going to forget. So Pen Farmer says DC streaming had such potential, such a clear case of mismanagement, poor decisions, or maybe just bad timing. No, it's just uh, poor management. Quite honestly, it's AT and T. It's the AT and T Time Warner merger is really what it is. And um, I, I heard somebody. I, I I started laughing about this. Is uh, somebody I think said that uh, CW might be interested in Swamp Thing? And can you imagine? Swamp Thing, uh, first of all, on the CW with the CW's budget, and then also uh, with their, how should I say it, their stamp that they have on things of talking about feelings in hallways. Would this be talking about feelings in the swamp now, you know, by the tree or something like that? Uh, yeah, it just, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a good thing. 
not a good thing at all. Yeah, I can't see Swamp Thing on CW. Don't get me wrong. I love my cheesy CW shows for what they are. They are not what Swamp Thing is. Swamp Thing would be a huge, like, 15 steps backwards if it went to CW. You can see flowers on Swamp Thing, like he's over here. He's He's got some flowers on him. You know. Feelings on boats. That's it. Feelings, feelings on the bayou. That, that's that's the new uh, that's the new dating game called uh, Feelings on the Bayou. Yeah, worse than ruining Constantine on CW. Yeah, well, Constantine was supposed to be a guest, and then they brought him on full time, and then they kind of neutered him on there. Uh, the Bayou with feeling. Yeah. So a couple other shows. Uh, well, I should say one other show that got canceled uh, as of last night. The Good Place. The Good Place is going to end after season four. So season four is going to be upcoming here. And once that is uh, out, that is going to be it. NBC has canceled that show as well. Um, why? Probably because the ratings are starting to slip on it. I wouldn't I, I wouldn't imagine. Um. Yeah, the good place did go to the bad place. So, yeah, I, I'm not disappointed by that. Quite honestly, they needed to end that. And um, it, it kind of does, Edver, it does disappear into all the other shows that are out there. So, Swamp Thing the musical. God, Swamp Thing the puppet show. Da, da, da. I think Swamp, Swamp Thing, the musical puppet show. How about that? They already did Swamp Thing, the animated series back in the 90s, and that was a horrible, horrible mess. If you ever want to see some uh, uh, some really heavy-handed eco messages, that, that's the one to go and watch. <laughs> oh, God. The Swamp and the Street have a romance? No. Stop giving them ideas. <laughs> Come on. You don't want to see a, mus a musical puppet show based on Swamp Thing? I have a feeling that I'm going to rip you apart with vines. Uh, Viking Bitch says, there is only so many stories to be told in The Good Place. It does need to end at some point. Yeah. And I, I can see season four being a good ending place. It's original, so no chance. Yeah, it hasn't been proven before. That's right, Ed Brewer, I forgot. If it hasn't uh, been out there before and made a lot of money, then there's no dice. It's not going to happen. Yeah. You have to, uh, I guess what you have to do now is you have to tailor it to an executive telling them that it's like such and such a thing uh, that made a lot of money and it's exactly like this. And then you just make whatever else version that you want. And if it does well, then it becomes the new it thing. I want to see a Puppets of Tomorrow. Actually, that would be really funny, Mr. Roboto, if they did kind of like Smile Time did for Angel um, and do it on uh, Legends of Tomorrow through the Puppets of Tomorrow. That would be... They already have an evil puppet uh, on the show. It's one of the uh, villains in this season. It would be pretty funny. <clears throat> They'll reboot The Good Place in 2057. Wait for it. Oh, Morks is not going to take that long. They'll reboot uh, the Good Place in 2021. Don't be surprised. I mean, Veronica Mars is coming back. So, there you go. Maybe that's the reason why they canceled it is because uh, Kristen Bell couldn't meet her obligation. No, they, probably not. I, I'm guessing that it was just you know because the ratings were slipping. And they're like, ah, let's give it one more season. We'll just end it in a good place. See what I did there? Ah, ah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that was the bloodbath. I mean, hose yourself off. Um, there's a lot of shit that's happened. And uh, it's going to continue to happen, quite honestly. We're going to have a lot more stuff that gets canceled. Uh, to make room for a lot more stuff that also will get canceled. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the reasons why uh, Warner Brothers always had a long-standing panel at this year's uh, Comic-Con. And this year they decided to cancel it. 
out of the blue. And my guess is, is the reason why they canceled it is they don't want to have to answer about this new streaming service that's going on. They don't want to answer about canceling Swamp Thing. Um, there's a lot of things they don't want to answer about right now because AT&T has taken them over and they don't like answering que questions, quite honestly. Um, that is my guess of the reason why they canceled that panel. And it's a huge panel, quite honestly. It's a really fucking huge panel. It's, it's held in Hall H. It's all day long. And I mean, they bring out everything. Uh, Dennis, uh, Warner Brothers seems to hate money. Uh, I don't think they hate money. I just don't think they know how to handle money. A lot of it seems to be going up their ass in Coke is really what it is. So they don't want you to, they don't want to own up to their own responsibilities. Yeah, exactly. Viking bitch. They don't want to answer questions. The reason is they'd have to fly somebody out there, some executive, and he's too busy with a, a hose up his ass and a hooker blown blow up of it, you know, blow up his ass. So yeah, it's just, he doesn't want to do that. He doesn't think he can do it on the plane. Cause of course he'd have to fly coach and they make it do it. You make you do it yourself at that point. So, and I don't think he has a hose that's long enough to. Yeah, you only live once. <laughs> Man. Yeah, a couple hundred years from now when they're looking at this video and they're going to go, what the fuck is butt chugging? Yeah. So. Ah, uh, we're going to file this one under just another fanboy outrage, or as I call it, Jaffo. Thank you, Blue Thunder. Just another fanboy outrage. But for the five of you who haven't seen Avengers Endgame, leave the room right now. You gone? Good. Because uh, Tony Stark died, okay, in Avengers Endgame. And so now there's a new petition by a whole bunch of raving fanboys to bring Tony Stark back to life in the MCU. What the fuck, man? I mean, come on. Are you guys going to bitch and moan about every little decision that Kevin Fahey makes on this? Yes, they have a petition out there to bring Tony Stark back to life in the MCU. Uh, that's why I call it just another fanboy outrage. Quite honestly, you can't swing a fucking dead cat on the internet without hitting a petition about something. And, uh, you know, a petition about making Captain Marvel a man or, you know, uh, making it so their childhood, they can go back in time and relive their childhood or, you know, finally getting that money to move out of their parents' basement, something like that. It's just really fucking stupid, quite honestly. And uh, yeah. Uh, till next movie with uh, Arno Stark. I, I don't know. Having Tony fix everything and die was really. Yeah, exactly. Marks. That was the whole thing. That was his redemption. And someone actually pointed out something really nice. I didn't notice this. But if you look at all the people that were in Civil War on which sides of Civil War, pretty much everyone on Iron Man's side are either dead, paralyzed. Spidey's the only one that isn't, and he was only a peripheral. He was brought in. He was kind of an innocent, if you will. He's the only one nothing bad happened to. On Cap's side, Falcon got promoted. <laughs> Ant-Man went to go live with his kids, and his, you know, he, he lived a happy life. Um, so did Hawkeye. Hawkeye gets to live with his wife and kids. Um, Wanda is still alive. I mean, she outlived her boyfriend and uh, you know, and her brother. And Winter Soldier, what happened to him? He's living a good life in Wakanda and has got a new arm and he's over 100 years old and looks pretty damn good for it. So, yeah. Uh, the people that actually were on the side of good, if you will, or on the moral side of things, uh, did okay. And the people that were on the uh, kind of questionable moral side of things did not do okay. I don't know if they had planned it out that way uh, the Russo brothers, but that's the way it came out. Yeah. And yeah, Robert Downey Jr. wants out of this. He actually set up a, um, a new organization that he wants to clean up the world is what he really wants to do. He wants to clean it up completely 
by 2030 is what he says. I, you know, that's commendable, man. That's, that's fucking awesome. <clears throat> yeah. I'm pretty sure, uh, cap wouldn't have gone back, uh, for Peggy either without Tony's influence. Yeah. I, I don't think cap would have jeopardized the timeline to tell you the truth. Like he did. So. Tony Stark faked his death before in the comics, Mr. Roboto. Yeah, in the comics, not in the movies. Cameron Hamilton, real life Tony Stark. Exactly. That's what Robert Downey Jr. is, man. He's a real life Tony Stark. Well, except for the technology stuff. He's not into all of that. But he's got the money. So. And welcome, Cameron Hamilton. Exactly. Uh, and yes, uh, Viking Mitch, I agree with you. People need to stop with the stupid ass petitions. Yeah, I granted, I know they're easy to do. I know you can put them out there. Um, stop doing it. Just really stop. Get out. Go outside. Go and talk to other people. If you want to start a fucking petition, go stand outside a fucking supermarket and get some signatures then. Get your local politician, something, you know, do something good for the group around you, like your community. Do something good for your state. You know, do something good for the, you know, the planet, if you will. There's a lot of other things that you could put that time and effort into. And I'm going to be a little preachy. Yes, I am going to be fucking preachy about this. There are a lot of other things you could put that time and effort into than saving a fucking character in a movie to bring him back. That's a lot of fucking wasted time. A lot of wasted time. There, off my soapbox. No, one more thing. Go out and clean up your fucking beaches, man. There's a lot of plastic out there, too. You can spend that time doing that. There you go. Now I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> uh, you want a petition for a happy movie? I think there are a lot of happy movies out there, aren't there? There are a lot of uh, G movies, PG-13 movies, things like that. So um, Bill and Ted face the music, Bill and Ted 3. We got, it's supposed to be about uh, Bill and Ted with their daughters, and they're going to be traveling through time with their daughters this time around, which was kind of weird. We thought at the end of Bill and Ted 2 that they had sons, but they never really did say what the genders were. They just gave the names turns out that they're actually their daughters and they already have actresses in mind for this they've already hired the actresses i should say so samara weaving is going to play thea preston and bridget lundy Payne is going to be billy logan <laughs> yes the boys name the girls after each other which is just fucking weird but still it works in the bill and ted universe <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah i i'm actually i saw their their pictures up there and uh the girl who's playing ted's daughter oh my god looks exactly like him she even has the same haircut and uh has that same kind of stoner look on her face and looks a lot like Kean like a young keanu reeves it's pretty damn funny uh, so let's get something, uh, get to something relevant and important to mankind. Good omens. Hey, no. Sorry, there's somebody at the door, most likely. Pepper. Knock it off. Thank you. Sorry. She, of course, someone's outside the door, probably the neighbors. And so she has to bark at the door, even though she can't see anything. Because that is what she is. Uh, yeah, I haven't gotten a good omens yet. That's on the docket for this weekend, uh, everybody. I haven't gotten to it as of yet. I know, blasphemy. But uh, sometimes she listens. She was, she just kept going there. She's being really lazy about it too. She's doing it from the couch. She just looks at the door and barks at the door, and just had her head up a little bit. And I'm like, damn, you're a lazy dog. Uh, no, the mailman has their own location, not anywhere near the door. <clears throat> Excuse me. I could be getting Jehovah's Witnesses again or um, 
the fucking uh, Mormons coming to my door because that's happened before too, live on air. Uh, we had that for one of the Saturday morning blasts off. So I'm sitting here and the doorbell rings and I have to run over there and go get the fuck away. And yeah. Candy Graham. Candy Graham for Mongo. <clears throat> there we go. Sorry, I had a little frog in my throat there. <clears throat> Still do. So speaking about Comic-Con, going back to that Warner Brothers panel, for those of you who can't make it, Comic-Con is auctioning off multiple pairs of four-day passes to this year's Comic-Con with the proceeds going to fund the upcoming Comic-Con Museum. They're actually building a Comic-Con Museum here in San Diego. So if you've got like, uh, I don't know, a couple thousand dollars to burn through that you want to know, you know, and you want to come over to Comic-Con, that's a good way of doing it. If you go over to my Facebook page, you will actually see the link there. It's on, you know, eBay is where they're doing this stuff. And people are bidding on it. And they have different days, different times that a lot of these passes. And it's, it's two passes per uh, auction that are going on. So if you're still interested in joining up and coming down here and uh, seeing what it's all about, you still can. You can do it just as long as you have a lot of money. Because uh, the hotels are not, you know, not cheap either. What is it for one of the really shitty hotels down here? Uh, it's costing it's over a hundred dollars a night easily. So, uh, candy cram or candy striper? No, no, at the door? No, no. there's nobody at the door. It, I'm it was the neighbors most likely because there was no ring at my doorbell, which was good. I've still got to get a no soliciting sign and all that kind of crap outside my door because quite honestly, they're not supposed to be doing that anyway, but people do. So, oh, uh, here's something fun. The Russo brothers, again, going back to the Russo brothers, they're going to executive produce an anime series for Magic the Gathering on Netflix. So for those of you who are Magic the Gathering fans, they are doing an animated series on this uh, with the Russo brothers as executive producers. What does that mean with the Russo brothers as executive producers? It just means they have a shitload of money that they realize that Magic the Gathering brings in a shitload of money. So they are going to do a series based on something that's really popular that they know is going to bring in a lot of money. And yes, Mr. Roboto, I agree with you. I'm not a Magic the Gathering fan, but I know there are some people here that are. Uh, no, I don't have room for everybody to crash at my place. No. And besides that, I'm very far away from the con. I take public transportation through the quote-unquote bad part of town. So the bad part of town here makes me laugh because I'm originally from San Francisco, and the bad part of town is really bad. You can actually get your ass shot uh, in broad daylight for walking through the bad part of town and you know turning the wrong corner here the bad part of town is you got a rusty car yeah and i mean quite frankly i live in the bad part of town of where i live right now and it's not that bad other than all the roaming pit bulls the free roaming pit bulls around here so yeah uh I, you think they're that they're magic the gathering fans too uh Morks that the Russo brothers are. I don't know if they are. I don't know if they have any time to play that, to tell you the truth. They are freaking busy. They are all over the place. Whatever you do, don't stomp on the burning bag on your doorstep. Yeah. I, I've never fallen for that. I never will. We're missing Stanley. Yeah, we are. We miss, we are missing Stanley, aren't we? So, um, let's see what else I got going on here. I have, oh yeah, we'll talk about this. And someone had brought it up in the chat anyway. So the rumor, and this is rumor, mind you, DC Comics is rumored to be closing Vertigo Comics after 26 years. Um, I really doubt that's going to be the case. Vertigo Comics has been a periphery now for uh, a periphery comic for a while now on, at, at DC. 
and it doesn't bring in any it, it really doesn't do anything at the moment there are no i shouldn't say that there are active comics under the vertigo title they have been trying to revive it a bit but it's more the old stuff is being made into tv shows now like swamp thing i zombie um constantine all that kind of stuff is all from vertigo comics and i i really have a high doubt that dc comics is going to cancel uh, you know or, or shut down vertigo it brings them in money yes exactly record it for the ages uh, and, and I base all this stuff on logic. That's all it is. I'm just looking at all the different pieces that are in play. All this stuff is out there for everyone to see and just piece together. It's just all in different news formats. I get feeds that bring in news and I put it all together. Yeah, I know they are all, all our canceled TV shows, each are that are on Vertigo from Vertigo. There's some other stuff that's getting made from Vertigo that, uh, that is in the works right now. So not all of it is canceled TV shows. A good majority of it right now is, but not all of it. Oh, as I jostle my table. Earthquake. Oh, yeah, this one. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, James Bond 25 still doesn't have a title yet. Uh, the set was rocked by three huge explosions uh, at the beginning of the week. Actually, I believe it was on Sunday. And uh, it injured one crew member and destroyed the set. Uh, this production has been pretty fucking cursed, quite honestly. This came right after uh, Daniel Craig had injured his ankle to the point where he needed surgery and needed to take two weeks off to recover from the surgery to fix his ankle. So, and he, he injured it on set. I don't know what the hell is going on over there, what they're doing. If they're doing some really, you know, nutty stunts or something like that. But yeah, it's the, it is the last Daniel Craig Bond. Uh, you don't like him as Bond, Marks? Uh, I read the books. He is actually the closest to the original Bond out of all of them, quite honestly. He is the, uh, the closest. And uh, the original books... So the original books of James Bond, Bond is an alcoholic, chain-smoking, paranoid motherfucker who will fuck anything in a skirt. Okay? That's what he is. And does not give a shit if he's going to get fired or not from his job because he knows that he can die any day. And that's how Daniel Craig is playing him. And uh, I, you know, I, I kind of like the way he's doing it. The new 007 Wolf for Brimley. Uh, let's talk about diabetes. Diabetes. <laughs> That's my horrible Wilford Grimley impersonation, by the way. Uh, Daniel Craig and Judy Dench. See, I didn't like Judy Dench as M. That was the one thing I didn't like. I, you know, it was her. Uh, yeah. The Fines brother, I can't remember his I don't know if it was Ralph or, or if it was the other one who played uh, M later on was okay, but M kind of just blends into the net, you know, the background. That's what he's supposed to do. I did like the new Q that they have. The, the young guy is Q. I really liked him as the new Q. I hope they bring him back because uh, he was actually really good. You need someone that's kind of that geeky, skinny, scrawny kind of guy that uh, is into all the tech shit, but also is, uh, uh, choose all the basically gets doesn't say that he needs all the checks shit which is really kind of nice uh your favorite bonds are pierce timothy and sir sean obviously uh i hated pierce actually pierce brosnan was the reason why i stopped watching bond movies yeah i literally stopped watching it because it just reminded me of remington steel that's all it was um I'm, I'm going to go out. I mean, so right now, Daniel Craig is my favorite Bond. My second favorite Bond was George Lazenby, the one and done. And the reason for that is uh, he didn't want to, he didn't want to be typecast. He was, he was actually thinking ahead, but he also shot himself in the foot on this one. 
George Lazenby didn't want to be typecast. So near the end of uh, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, he told the production crew, uh, Albert R. Broccoli, that he was not going to return. They were pissed at him. Very, very pissed at him. So they didn't tell him how to act in the final scene. The final scene being uh, when Teresa gets shot. Uh, and she's dead in his arms. And he actually had to read the book. He had to read the, the Ian Fleming book to see how that was going to play out and how he would act it. And that was the best scene out of the Bond movies, in my opinion, quite honestly. And uh, that scene alone sold it for me as James Bond for him. And then after that, it's Timothy Dalton. And yeah, yeah, I know Sean Connery is not uh, up there on my on my Bond list. I was actually watching uh funny thing. We mentioned this is uh, I was watching you only live twice and I've got the song stuck in my head. You know, you only live twice. Uh, Cause it was on uh, one of the movie channels. I can't remember what it was. And I was watching that. And uh, as I was editing all my notes for today and also doing my, uh, my title card. And yeah, it's a good movie. You only live twice. So what else do we have here? Uh, we only got two more things going on here, so not too much more. The, there's another rumor that Blade may appear in a Marvel Hulu series. So remember Marvel, uh, Hulu is doing a, a bunch of live action series. So they've got Ghost Driver coming back. They're doing the Hellstrom uh, twins. And I can't remember who else. If Blade is coming back for a live action Hulu series, they're not that far off from Midnight Suns, quite honestly. And they could do it. It's not the original cast of Midnight Suns from the comic, but they could do it. That is, it sounds like that's what they're doing. Like they are putting this all together, but only on Hulu, which is weird that they're not putting this on the Disney streaming service, the Disney Plus. Is Ildris Elba playing Blade? No, I think they're talking about Wesley Snipes again. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully Blade has a walker, you know. Or maybe he can have one of those articulated wheelchairs. Come back here, vampire. I'm going to kill you. Ghost Uber driver. <laughs> that would be a good one, Mr. Roboto. I could actually, uh, I can get into that. Uh, movie Fenobi, yeah, I agree with you. I grew up with Roger Moore as well. That was the first Bond that I saw. But as I got into the books and uh, the movies and all that kind of stuff, it uh, Daniel Craig is is my favorite so far. Uh, why don't they get Scarlett Johansson for Blade? Viking bitch. Oh, wait. That's right. Yeah, there's... Uh, so speaking of uproar about things, I guess uh, Ruby Rose, who's playing Batwoman because she's gender fluid in real life, can't play a lesbian again. So she's getting backlash for playing a lesbian Batwoman <laughs> on a CW show that hasn't aired as of yet. I can't make this shit up. I quite honestly, I really can't. I just, I read it briefly last night as a, it just kind of flashed past and uh, no one cares for Ruby Rose. Fenope. I mean, how she keeps getting work is fucking beyond me. Quite honestly. Uh, she's annoying in John wick too. When they made her a mute, <laughs> that was telling right then and there. Uh, yeah, she just, I don't you know, also, what is it? Uh, one of the, uh, Resident Evil movies, uh, she ended up getting, uh, uh, shredded in a blade and a, in a gigantic, uh, air blade. Again, there's a reason for that. So, yeah. Uh, is there a petition to change Ruby Rose for RuPaul? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, Marks, that would be awesome having RuPaul as a uh, Batwoman <laughs> for a CW show. Then you could really, you could actually combine it with drag, uh, 
the, what is it the the drag race run uh, yeah runway thing that he's got going on combine those two shows put it on cw and let let it go oh man uh yeah slurmy scott i i understand it, the whole gender fluid thing it's uh, you know uh, quite honestly i don't care about people's sexuality to tell you the truth if you want to sleep with somebody sleep with somebody go for it i just don't give a shit uh you shouldn't have any restrictions put on you because of who you're sleeping with uh you know it, it really just doesn't make any difference it's not any of my business who the fuck you're sleeping with so genders a tomorrow cw genders a tomorrow that would do uh movie for nobody that, that one's a good one i have to admit okay yeah exactly and happy pride everybody <laughs> that's right it is pride week so why not have some outrage against a gender fluid actor who's playing a lesbian on a tv show that hasn't aired as of yet exactly uh it, it, exactly pen farm girl if you are a good actor you can play any role that's what acting is all about is about playing another role it is not meaning that you know you're taking the job away from uh a bad actor who just happens to be into you know who just happens to be gay you know Yes, so Tom Hanks played a gay person in Philadelphia. Oh my god, he's not gay. Oh, he's straight. Yeah, oh, where was the outrage in that? I mean, Tom Hanks is an actor. He is a great actor. There's a reason why you pick these people for these roles. One is that they are good at their job, and two, they bring asses to the seats to see movies or tv shows things like that they bring in money i'm not going to bring in some you know unknown just because of their you know who they like to sleep with and they happen to fit that role it doesn't work that way okay i, I just don't understand people's logic on this anymore your blending of fantasy and reality is skewed now at this point is what's happening Ah, uh, Adam Sandler played an idiot in The Water Boy. Oh, wait, he's an idiot in real life, too. That's right. I'll allow it. Exactly, Marks. Exactly. Uh, exactly, Mufin. Every Ripley was a male character originally, and Sigourney Weaver is not male, at least last I heard. Maybe something's changed. Who knows? I mean, there are those rumors about Jamie Lee Curtis, but we're not going to go there. Even though I just did. Uh, no, Dennis, now it's Pride Month. The thing has become a political commercial monster. Wow, really? Okay. Well, good. I'm surprised it wasn't shunted over to February, being that it's the shortest month of the year. Like uh, another month. Not that I want to get political about it or anything. Um, yeah. It's so on to happier stuff. And I'm not talking about happy. So the last thing I've got here, which is kind of interesting news. Keanu Reeves is being sought after for a role in the MCU's Eternals movie. Now, this is the Eternal movie, uh, Eternals movie, which is uh, currently supposedly starring Angelina Jolie. So you'd have Angelina Jolie and Keanu Reeves in the same movie. And it's a Marvel movie. Yeah. Uh, let that sink in for a couple of seconds before your head kind of explodes on that one. It's very interesting. I, uh, I'm i interested in it myself. I want to see Keanu Reeves in a Marvel movie. I would like to see uh, Keanu Reeves has been you know, saying that he wants to play Wolverine. I would love to see Keanu Reeves as Wolverine, to tell you the truth. A lot more so than Daniel Radcliffe. Huh. <laughs> uh, the end is nigh, <laughs> Ejar. No. Uh, look, 
I said this a long time ago when Marvel started doing their, you know, when Marvel movies started gaining in popularity and started gaining, you know, getting a lot of money coming in. And I said, watch, it's going to be that everyone wants to, wants to be in a Marvel movie or a superhero movie because that is going to be the trend. That is going to be, and, and that didn't take much, you know, prognosticating at all on that one. It's just fucking common sense in Hollywood, you know? That's what ends up happening. Wow. Sorry, I was getting a phone call there live on the air and I had to squelch it. Uh, I've always thought he was underrated too, Pen Farm Girl. I like Keanu Reeves. He is actually pretty damn funny. Uh, he's a great action star, great, great action movie star. He can pull off drama too. Uh, go back and look at Parenthood. This is back in his early days. And go and take a look at him in that scene with Diane Waste when he's talking about um, parenting. And tell me he's not a good actor. I mean, and that was when he was 20-something years old. When everyone's giving him shit about... Uh, well, granted, okay, when he was in Fr Francis Ford Coppola's Dracula, he was still in TED mode. Because at one point he was like sitting down to have dinner with Dracula and his head almost kind of bobbed a little bit like Ted. And I was like, oh, fuck, man, really? But yeah, I mean, that's early on. Yeah, he does get a lot of shit for that one, uh, Pen Firmer, like I, like I just said. Yeah, whoa. Movie for Nobody says it's going to be interesting seeing how this next set of movies is going to do, even before the 20th century Fox characters become available. I'm curious to see the stories and box office results. Well, who's going to be the big bad? Who's going to be the overarching big bad? Supposedly, they're going to split it into two different um, categories, if you will. You're going to have the Earth-centric heroes, and you're going to have the Cosmic-centric heroes. And, uh, you know, there is, there is a rumor out there right now that because of the timeline shenanigans that have gone on that they're going to bring in Kang Kang from the, the conqueror from the future. And for those of you who don't know who Kang is Kang, um, he's supposedly from the 31st century has, he's taken over the earth or taken over the universe in the 31st century. And he goes back in time. He actually exists in the past present and the future all simultaneously. And um, I don't know. That would be kind of an interesting character for them. They could also bring in the Fantastic Four that way as well. It's, uh, no, Mr. Roboto, they could bring in Kang and bring in the Fantastic Four at the same time. They, that could also bring Dr. Doom in as well because Dr. Doom is supposedly Kang. There, there are many different versions of who the fuck Kang is. And, uh, yeah, it would be a very interesting thing. I mean, the timeline's already fucked in the MCU now at this point. Why not fuck it even further by bringing in Kang? Well, yeah, supposedly Kang is the descendant of Reed Richards. Exactly. But that's one of them. Also, Kang might be Dr. Doom himself. It's not really known who the really, who he really is. It depends on the writer of the month that you have, that you're watching, reading the comics from. Yeah, you can get Galactus and Silver Surfer as well. That's that's your cosmic uh, perspective there. I mean, we still have Adam Warlock out there. We know after Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Adam Warlock is in his chrysalis. We've seen it. Yes. And it wasn't just a little Easter egg thing in the background. It was actually front and center in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. So we know it's out there. Keanu Reeves for Dr. Doom? No. You know who I would like to see as Dr. Doom? Well, I would like to see voicing Dr. Doom would be um, Clancy Brown. Who would he play? Who could play him physically? Oh. Wow. That's a good question. I don't know who you could get to play uh, Dr. Doom in, in this crop of actors because you have to be somebody younger. 
uh nobody in their 40s or 50s it'd have to be somebody in at least in their 30s uh or 20s or 30s somewhere around there idris elba no not idris elba jesus christ everyone keeps mentioning idris elba for every role that comes out reed richards idris elba sue richards idris elba and yes clancy is one of the best bad guys of all times and he's an awesome dude i mean he really is i follow him on twitter and he's pretty fucking funny I highly recommend it if you haven't. Keanu plays angry men. Yeah, he does. Uh, would Lori Petty be the love interest? Lori Petty's retired. She is uh, from acting. I, I know what you're getting that movie for, Novi. Uh, Clancy Brown needs more work. I wonder if Doc Cameron and Jackson Public uh, will ever make a Red Death movie. Yeah, you know... I'm very interested to see. I think it's July. I want to say it's next month that we're getting the live action SpongeBob movie. And for those of you who don't know, Clancy Brown is the voice of the boss. That's right. The crab dude. I can't remember his name right now. I'm blanking on it. It's been a while. But uh, there's going to be a 20th anniversary episode where all the voice actors are going to play live action versions of their characters in an episode. And I am so fucking looking forward to that. That looks like it's going to be so much fun. If you haven't watched SpongeBob SquarePants, it's just a, a great, it's a hoot. I mean, the movies are awesome. The movies are spectacularly funny. And even without drugs. So live action spongebob why of why because they can it's a 20th anniversary and it's it's gonna be fun you got your season seven uh of uh venture brothers disc already viking bitch join the club <laughs> i honestly still to this day don't know how i got it that early or how my friend got it that early like i said i saw him post something on facebook that he had gotten it i'd forgotten that it was coming out ordered it and it showed up at my door the next day <clears throat> excuse me yeah. Florian Montu as Dr. Doom. He's the son of Draco in Creed 2, voiced by the person you said by Clancy Brown. Well, I would like to see somebody who could actually play both roles, uh, to tell you the truth. But who knows? EJR says when they brought in the Infinity Gauntlet and had an overarching question of how to defeat him, would have been the prime opportunity to bring in the Silver Surfer Galactus. What a wasted opportunity. Yeah, but they didn't own those characters at the time, Ejar. So that's the reason why they couldn't do it. They had to do a workaround. So, yeah. Uh, wait, people watch movies without taking drugs? When did this start happening? And eh, It happens on occasion. People forget, take their drugs. Dennis has a secret time machine. Shh, pen farm girl, don't tell people. You're not supposed to know. Actually, they won't anyway, because uh, it'll all be over with anyway in a couple of weeks. But I've said too much. Uh, Viking Bitch says they have the best special features. They're, that is the main reason to get the discs. That and watching them over and over and over again. Exactly, Viking Bitch. I love... Their special features. Their special features are awesome. And yeah, just watching them on Hulu does not do it justice, quite honestly. You need the special features. Blind Rage. Uh, yeah, I could do with a Blind Rage series. I think that would be pretty funny. A Blind Rage spinoff. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Morks. Uh, Pepper... That, that's her secret gift is she kicks you in the nuts hard enough that you forget the last five minutes of what happened. I'm not the only one that she kicks. I mean, she kicks everybody in the hoo-hahs. Men and women alike. <laughs> so it is a, uh, it, it's an art form uh, for her, I believe. And she can do it when you're standing, when you're sitting. You know, when you're on a ladder, she can do it anywhere, quite honestly. I don't know how she does it. It's it's a, it's a gift for her. She's asleep right now. She's curled up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
it's pretty funny. So I have a fan going over here and it kind of sweeps across the couch just a little bit. And she is curled just exactly away from the fan so it doesn't hit her. And I can see exactly how her body is turned. <laughs> so it's pretty damn funny. She makes me laugh at times. So let's see if I had, I think that was my last little bit of news that I have there. Yeah, it was. It was my last little bit of news. Um, so yeah, we we had a bit of a bloodbath this week in TV shows. Um, you know, it, it's it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of shows that are dead now, and we we have a lot more shows that are going to die too that uh, are coming up here. Plus, we have a lot of shows that are ending this year. Uh, I didn't know how um, how apt that one video that I did early on. It was a Saturday morning blast off where I was talking about all the different shows that were ending this year. And uh, it's turned into well over, so I think I, you know, I actually in that video talked about 20 or 22 shows, if I remember correctly. We've added on at least another 20 or 30 more on top of that since then that I talk about. And, um, yeah, so that's, you know, we're talking into the 50 range there. So there we go. I'll move it. says, you don't always need news. Tell us about Dennis. What's going on with you? Let's talk about you. You want to talk about feelings in hallways, move Fenobi? I don't want to talk about feelings in hallways. Uh, Mr. Roboto, I will petition for a Crypto the Superdog movie and Mighty Mouse movie. Uh, Mr. Roboto, there is a Mighty Mouse movie in the works already. It's a live action with a uh, animated component to it. So, and I believe the Russo brothers are involved in that one. I shit you not. I talked about this uh, about a month or two ago, somewhere around there, that there was a live action Mighty Mouse movie getting made. Yeah. And I was like, who in the fuck remembers Mighty Mouse? I do, but that's because I'm old. So, yeah. Feelings on camera. Uh, looking forward to a less crowded Comic Con. Surprise! Nothing big was planned for the 50th anniversary. When's the full schedule? The full schedule is probably going to come out. I still haven't got my pass yet in the mail, so they haven't sent those out. Usually, when they send out the passes in the mail, is when they start doing the scheduling. And it's never a less crowded Comic Con. You have, um, I believe, the limit now is 130,000 people. I think it's 130,000 people. So granted, yes, they have the street closed off in front of the convention center now, which is a great thing. That way people don't fucking die when they're trying to run across the street. Um, they have it so now only badge holders can get across the street to the convention center to keep the looky-loos out of there. And uh, that helps immensely, quite honestly. Uh, with the crowds, because otherwise you're going from 130,000 people to you're looking at probably close to 200,000 people in that area. Uh, you, you have people that are downtown anyway, because it spreads out probably about a mile from the con itself. And uh, it gets kind of crazy. I literally, when I want to take a break from the con, I hike up the hill because I know that most of uh, us nerds are out of weight and over or out of out of shape and overweight. That's what I was trying to say there and will not trudge up the hill. And yes, I know there's a stereotype and I'm sticking with it because it is the case. I go up the hill about a half mile away from the con and I can go and sit down in peace and get a decent meal without having to wait in a long line and overpriced uh, shitty food. uh with bus wankers yes there are going to be bus wankers on my uh i don't remember mighty mouse the yellow suit and the red cape or, or how he came to save the day really marks you, you kind of just uh uh as in the non-expensive pass which we give money for uh 
Dennis, can you get us all badges? Yeah, I can't get you badges. I have no stinking badges. I don't need no stinking badges. Yes, uh, that was inappropriate. I know. I'm going to hell for it, but there we go. Um, no, Mr. Roboto, I can't get you badges. It's kind of funny. Um, my my landlord, my my previous landlord, who also owns a comic book store, I've talked about him before. Actually, I've got his picture right here because I have his book right here. And by the way, his book is up for an Eisner Award at uh, Comic-Con. And from what I understand, it's in the, the finals right now, which is fucking awesome. So uh, Jamie Newbold, their own Southern California comics here in San Diego. Uh, great guy, really nice guy, and very, very fucking knowledgeable about comics. Uh, he has a booth that he does every year at uh, Comic-Con. And I've worked that booth before, too. <laughs> or not with him, but uh, actually a peripheral. We had a little portion of his booth that I, I got to work uh, for something else. And um, every year he gets inundated with people asking him for passes because he gets so many passes uh, for his employees and stuff like that. Plus he gets extra. And yes, I was a booth bitch, uh, Viking bitch. I, I, I've been a booth bitch multiple times. I'll, I'll, I can tell you about that. I'll, I'll tell you about that a little bit here too. But uh, I actually just talked to him at uh, Free Comic Book Day because I went over there for Free Comic Book Day. And I said, so people bugging you again for passes? He goes, fuck, that shit started in December is what he said. And he goes, uh, so I charge people for the pass because you know his extra passes, uh, you, you know, he, he has to pay for them out of his own pocket. So if, he, if he's going to have these people come in and work for him, he's going to charge them as well. And yes, it does happen. But yeah, people ask him all the time for that shit, and it's just not right. Yes, booth bitches are gender neutral. That, you're right, Viking bitch. Booth bitches are gender neutral. Um I did not go to free donut. Actually, I tried Mr. Roboto. I inadvertently didn't know it was free donut day. And I went to Dunkin' Donuts or Dunkin' as it's called now to grab something to drink. I was on the way to something else for work. And I saw this huge long ass line, both inside and outside. And I turned around and went away. I, and then I saw later on that it was free donut day. And I was like, oh, okay. Dennis's booth fluid. There we go. Yes. Nice marks. That's a good one. Uh, yeah, I uh, I remember. So, yeah, being in the booth, uh, shilling stuff, and we had this one guy that was like about three or four booths over that was screaming. I'm not. Ta I'm not kidding. Lee. Every minute of every day, yelling about how the books were fifty percent off, or his you know his trades were forty percent off all this kind of stuff just and then we got to the point where we were just tired of it and so he would yell out you know something like uh uh well, i don't know how much my books are and we go how much are they we'd scream back you know because we got tired of it after a while they go are they 50 percent off is what we'd say and we'd start answering him and yelling back and finally he started keeping it down a little bit more because uh yeah we, we got tired of that shit real quick when you're sitting in the same booth uh, i am a piece of meat we're all pieces of meat at some point in time. Just not right now. <laughs> uh, I'm always a huge bitch from Lufanobi. You know that. Uh, a booth himbo. Yeah. A she whore or a he whore. A he whore. That's what it is. I am a he whore. Yes. There you go. Uh, how much are they? 50% off. Exactly. Uh, yeah, he finally kind of stopped, you know, yelling as loud as he was because it was just fucking loud and it was all day and it just grinds on you after a time. And you're like, dude, seriously. And um, I, I remember, so I was working with uh, Roger one year, uh, Roger, who was a co-owner of a comic book store that I was going to and uh, helping him out. And I told him, I'm like, dude, you need to be uh, part P.T. Barnum in this and uh, as well as 
you know, uh, schmoozing and stuff like that. And you kind of have to be a barker when you're out there. You have to guide people because people are just wandering. It, you get sacred cow syndrome where people are just kind of wandering through the aisles like, and they're not looking at the booths because your booth, everybody's booth looks the same. And you need to differentiate what your booths look like so that people will wander in. And the booth that I happen to be working at, we had large statues outside of Superman and Batman, things like that. Yeah. And so we bring people in and, uh, you know, um, I brought back mystery bags at one point too. So that was, that was where we had a whole bunch of old comics that no one could get rid of in the dollar bin. We'd package them together. Like, I think it was like 10 comics for five bucks or something like that, or five comics for, or no, not, it was 10 or it was either 10 or 20 comics for five bucks. So we put them in a bag. We put uh, backing boards in the front and back. We had no duplicates inside of them. Uh, we tape them up so that people couldn't open them. And then we'd say it's five bucks for the bag and you get all this comics. And yeah, there were old comics and stuff like that, but we try and do runs and stuff like that of stories, storylines in there. So people would, you know, have something to read while you're sitting in line. Things like that. You need to actually, I, I tell people this all the time, especially if you're thinking about opening a booth at some place like Comic Con, you need to differentiate yourself from everybody else. Everybody else does a basic, what we call the basic booth bitch kind of booth. Okay. And if you're going to just go basic, you might as well not show up. Because if you're just going to go basic with it, you're going to look like everyone else and you're not going to make any money. If you differentiate yourself from everybody else, even a little bit, and do something out of the norm. You need to think outside of the box. You need to be creative about it. People will come to your booth. They might not buy shit, but they'll actually come to your booth and stop for a minute. Yes, I am a professional booth bitch. I have been to multiple things doing this. And uh, <clears throat> how can I say? He horror, skelet, skelet horror, horror company, man horror. Man whore at arms. I like man whore at arms. That's actually a good one, Marks. Uh, man whore at arms is is definitely it. <laughs> uh, Mufin, are we slurming? Did you hear that? Dennis will not go topless in his booth. Not even for you. I do. I I will not go topless now. That'll get you thrown out of Comic Con and banned. Yeah, unless it's part of your costume. Unless you're female. And then you're showing your tatas off, then that will get you thrown out. So, <laughs> yeah, Slurmy, I know. There are certain body physiques that do not play well with superhero, and, and mine is not one of them. So, I did go as Jack Burton one year, and uh, yeah, I didn't have a body for it either, but still, I went. No tatas at the Comic Con. Yeah. If you have, if you are female and have less than skimpy clothing on, uh, you will be asked to either cover up or leave. Yeah, it does happen. But you have a whole bunch of greased up guys dressed as gladiators uh, in G strings and stuff like that. Uh, they let that happen. Don't ask me. Yeah. I'm not kidding you either. I've seen this shit before. So one of my favorite Comic-Con <laughs> memories of working the booth is, uh, so one year the booth was right by the doors, the entrance doors. And so we usually get in about an hour early. So we can go and walk the floor, talk to people. That's where you make your deals usually is in that first hour before the doors open. And you can uh, barter with people. You can, you know, finagle things here and there. Um, and you can also get to see everything before everyone else does before the crowd comes in. So that's what we do is go and see stuff, take pictures, pose with stuff, make deals, all that kind of stuff. That's what you do. So one of my favorite memories is waiting for the doors to open. And as soon as the doors open, this woman in a wheelchair, a motorized wheelchair comes hauling ass in. I mean, just I don't know if she had that thing souped up or what, but it was doing at least 10 miles an hour. 
she comes flying in and she's going to round the corner and quite honestly i she was going to eat it at the speed that she was going she was easily going to eat it and as she's just going to make her way to the corner some guy steps out and she has to stop and go around him because otherwise she was just going to plow right into him and uh i actually have it on video someplace i don't remember where exactly i, I think i might have it on one of my drives someplace but it's one of those things it was kind of like you're eating popcorn because you could see it coming and it's like, oh, it didn't happen. <laughs> as bad as that sounds, it, it was one of those things that you're just like, oh my God, the train wreck's going to, oh, it, and I kind of liken it to um, <laughs> Hot Tub Time Machine when they're waiting for Crispin Glover's arm to come off. <laughs> and every time you see something coming, they're like, oh my God, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Oh, it doesn't happen. That's pretty much what it was like. And that was before Hot Tub Time Machine came out, too. All this stuff happened. Tatas are not allowed as long as you're dressed up as Power Girl. Uh, yes, uh, the Power Girls that do come through do have uh, uh, enormous Tatas. Let's just say that. And But the thing is, those are covered up. They just have a little window. That's all. A little window for cleavage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I wouldn't make a fine Aquaman. I, I've seen, if you guys want to see something really funny, uh, John Barrowman was drunk off his ass one year on G4. I'm pretty sure it's up on YouTube someplace. I think if you just type in John Barrowman, Attack of the Show, Comic-Con. He is drunk off his ass and talking, he's in amongst the fans because he was one of the guest um, hosts for G4's Attack of the Show at Comic-Con. And he got this guy who was dressed in a Speedo bikini, and that was it, as Aquaman. And he is groping this guy on camera. I mean, literally just groping the shit out of this guy on camera. And you can tell the guy is uncomfortable, and Barrowman just does not care. And uh, you can see the camera keeps trying to pan away from him at times. They're cut to other stuff, just as Barrowman's hand is going, you know, cupping things and yes barrowman was nuts that year and yes uh he is pretty fucking funny though too uh i i've seen him a couple times signing stuff and he's hilarious he's always on he is always on but he yeah he can get a little handsy especially if he likes you yeah that's why i'm glad he doesn't like me so he's not into me i'm not tall enough for him or blonde enough, or buff enough. And I'm okay with that. There we go. Yes, this has devolved into something else completely different, hasn't it? <laughs> well, it is getting near Comic-Con time anyway. And yes, uh, there are multiple, multiple things out there for people to win tickets to. Um, yeah, you can always... Go on Omaze. Omaze is a uh, a charity auction event kind of thing where you buy tickets in order to win things. And I believe they have uh, Comic-Con passes up there as well. So, yeah. As well as on eBay. See you, Mr. Roboto. Got to go to work. I know. Uh yeah, I know I'm usually too late for Mr. Roboto. Uh, he pops in every now and then when we're doing Saturday morning uh, blast off at the regular time at 1030. He usually pops in and then pops, pop back out again for work. So see ya. Have fun at work. Uh, Mufi, he says, have a fabulous weekend, beautiful people. Dennis, I will have to see how the next couple of weeks go. Might only pop in Friday, Saturday if I'm not beat. Oh, Mufi, no be. Well, have fun. You know, uh, have fun at work. I know you're doing, you know, some new stuff. Have fun with that. And I'm probably going to actually wrap some stuff up here too. So if you like what you see here, hit the subscribe button. Also hit the like button. It's right down here. If you don't like what you see, you can hit the dislike button. I just ask you to go down in the comment section down below and tell me what it is you don't like. Give me some constructive criticism, not just that you suck. You're funny looking, you know, your mother dresses you funny because she doesn't anymore because she's been dead for a while. Um, 
and uh yeah just give me a little constructive criticism if that's what you want you can also hit the bell down below when you want if you want to see when i'm be on live again next and you have a 50 50 chance of that actually happening because that's how google rolls uh you can go into the bell settings and get as many or little notifications as you want from me if you want to see when I'm going to be on again, you can always go to my website, suspendedfanimation.com, and see the schedule up there. The schedule is also up on Facebook as well. I have a Facebook page for Suspended Fanimation. It's up there as well. Follow me there. That's actually where I put a lot of uh, the news articles that you're reading throughout the week. That's where I call a lot of things from. And every now and then I call through some other stuff that I don't put up there just to make it special and, you know, have something to talk about that you haven't read as of yet. I also have a Twitter. I also have an Instagram. The Instagram is going to get really busy during Comic-Con. So join up for that. That's going to be kind of fun. And I also have a Patreon as well. I just don't have it set up with tiers at the moment. I don't know how I want to do the tiers setting as of yet. I will get to it at some point in time. I, honestly, I will. Oh, oh, did I forget anything? I did. So right up here, there's going to be a video that pops up. This video is going to be taken from my vast video library. If you're still on the fence about joining up, you can take a look at that. And it's going to pluck a video from that library that matches the algorithm of all the nasty videos you've been watching here on YouTube because that's how they roll. They keep track of all that stuff. If you like what you see there, then you can hit the subscribe button and also the like button as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now go check out Good Omens, Dennis. It's at least 50-50 chance you'll like it. Yeah, Pen Farm Girl, I will. Uh, I'm. It's one of the plans for this weekend. I'm actually taking uh, the small furry one over there to a dog fair uh, after this. So that's why it started off a little bit early. Uh, he doesn't bring in much money. You have to use your pimp hand and put him in place. Oh, wow. Really, Marks? <laughs> yes, Dennis, review something. Uh, what do you want me to review? Uh, I'm, I'm reviewing some stuff. So what I'm reviewing so far is, so right now, Sundays, I don't have anything planned at the moment. Uh, there is something interesting on, and I hate to say this, it's on stars, which means it's going to get canceled. There is a sci-fi-esque kind of show that has Olivia Munn on it about people with abilities. Uh, that is going to start premiering on Sunday, June 30th. I may end up covering that on Sundays. I don't know for sure as of yet. I keep seeing the ads for it and it looks good, better and better. So who knows? We'll see. Um, on Mondays, I have The Tick Season 2. I'm finishing that out. And that is going to roll into Legion. The final season of Legion is going to be on Mondays right after The Tick ends. And Legion begins right after that. Wednesdays, of course, is Krypton. This is really not a drill. Krypton is going to be happening this week. I thought it was last week it was going to start. It's actually this week. Yes. Uh, and Thursday, of course, is iZombie. Uh, that's if it continues to do kind of mediocre. And Friday, of course, is Swamp Thing. I am still going to cover Swamp Thing, even though it's been canceled. So moving away. Olivia Munn, Queen of the Faux Nerds. Yeah. I think I told you guys all that story before that I got pushed up against her at Comic-Con. Uh, yeah, I know. I Like I said, I've bumped into many, 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 many people, celebrities at Comic-Con at some point, and some literally uh, like her. And uh, yeah, I got to be... Uh, I was trying to just get across the street to get to the parking garage, to get to the car, to get the hell out. And uh, her security entourage... Uh, the crowds came in and pushed me up through her security entourage and I was up against her and the security flanks, you know, went around me as well. And we were kind of getting pushed across the street. And I'm like, okay, this is where I got to go. My stop's here. Yeah. Future Academy Award winning actress, Olivia Munn. Exactly. You're right, HR. She is the future Academy Award winning actress. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's a good call back to Futurama with uh, Pamela Anderson. So he doesn't know I won the Oscar? Yeah, it is. Dennis gets to be the smart guy again with Legion. No, I'm just observant. That's all it is, movie Fenobi. And I, you know, I, I for some reason I'm on the same wavelength, you know, as the showrunner. That's all it is. 
Uh, is that a Voltron in your pocket or are you just uh, lying to see me? Yeah. No, she was actually petrified. She was completely and totally fucking petrified at the fan response because I believe that was her first year at Comic-Con, if I'm not mistaken. Or no, it was her second year. The first year, people didn't really know what to make of her. They just knew she was on G4 Attack of the Show. And I don't think she was popular as of yet. And then it was the second year that she became very popular. And she was freaked the fuck out. So, yeah, it uh, it, it was quite the eye-opener for her on that. And it was the first like year, I think, that we got the big crush of people, too. Uh, remember, like, I want to say even 2001, 2002, the floors were fucking empty. You could walk the floors of Comic-Con easily. And I remember a full-scale mock-up of the an X-Wing from Star Wars. And I walked right up to it and I took a picture. because there was only one guy in front of it. That was it. Now you couldn't get anywhere near that shit. <laughs> I'll form the head. Uh-huh. Exactly. <laughs> Once you go black line, you never go blue line. Well, yeah. Uh, Idra, I ran into her about 10 years ago in a CVS. She was in front of me. Uh, hearing what she was picking up, you might want to get CBC. <laughs> she was at the pharmacy, huh? Yeah. I I can understand, Ejar. I I'm, I'm not surprised, let's just say. I'm really not. So only here can we make Voltron TV MA. No, it's not only here, movie for nobody. I'm fairly sure there's a lot of fanfic out there that has gone much, 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 much farther than that. I mean, just ask Slurmy. He's probably got a whole bunch of that stuff written someplace. <laughs> All right. So with that said, I'm going to let you guys go for the day. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everybody, who, by the way, who joined me in the chat. Ejar Mufinopi, Viking Bitch, Morks, um, Mr. Roboto. I'm going off the top of my head here. Penn Farm Girl. Uh, and I'm, I'm lost as to who else is here. There was a lot of people that were here. Agent Future. Hey, Agent Future. I know you're kind of lurking in there. Thank you for joining me. And everyone else that I missed, of course. Uh, thank you. This is always a fun time. Is uh, Saturdays? I almost said Sundays. <laughs> uh, yes, it is the most awesome chat that we have. And thank you out there for watching the video. If you like what you see, again, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and come on in and join us live on Saturday mornings. It's always a lot of fun, and we get to talk about a lot of different shit. And yes, I do talk to the chat as we are doing this as well. It's one of those things that uh, is fun. So with that said, take a look at the video. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. And don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. Otherwise, your TV show might get canceled after the first episode. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. And I will see you on Monday.